Hi, I'm Pavel. Uh, I am on my fifth DevConf, and uh, I have I have I have my presentation as a web page because I will be speaking about web APIs. So I have decided that uh, probably it will be better to uh, to do everything such as you can try it by yourself because I can because I could mock up something or, or something like that, but you, you can try and you can try everything I will be doing, uh, doing by yourself. Uh, I, will be, I will be talking about the most interesting uh, browser and web APIs. Uh, how much of you are the web developers, I will ask. Yeah, like uh, half of the people. Uh, and how much of you are programming in JavaScript or TypeScript or doing something like, it's like, it's funny that it's a, bit, a little bit more than the, than the web developers. Because now the JavaScript isn't only for a web and uh, I will be a little bit touching, touching this topic uh, on this presentation. Uh, and uh, how much of you has used some uh, some special, unexpected, weird thing on the web, like for example, VR on the web or uh, augmented reality on the web. Yeah, it's so. So you are in a good point because I will be talking about this, uh, about how to make uh, strange, weird things uh, directly in the web. Um, uh, it's the, the, this is the address uh, on the on the code if if you don't have a, if you don't have a scanner. But uh, uh, I, the, first, the first thing is I would like to uh, distinguish between the web API and uh, some API web service, because these are totally two different things, but, uh, but, uh, but they, are, uh, they are often mixed together. Uh, the the first thing that probably most people will, uh, will be thinking of when I say the web API, they will think about, uh, for example, OpenAI API or uh, some Facebook API or Vedder API or some, some service which is somewhere in the cloud and you are, you are getting information from there. But this is this is actually not a web API. I will be talking about different kind of API. I will be talking about the capabilities which has browser in itself on the device uh, locally uh, without the internet and which can be used by the JavaScript uh, to make some, some cool stuff. Uh, very, very, often, uh, very often happens to me the one thing, uh, Five years ago, uh, I was here at DevConf, and uh, my friend Michal uh, wanted to show something cool. And uh, uh, back then, the most cool thing was the virtual reality. It is a little bit surprising, but yes, uh, five years ago, the virtual reality was like, I don't know, like AI today, kind of. Uh, and, uh, and we were thinking that, yeah, we can go to DevConf and uh, put here some Windows PC with Steam VR and show something, but it will be a little bit weird to have in a, in a Mozilla stand in a DevConf, which is organized by Red Hat, the Windows computer without, some, without any connection to this conference. So we have figured out and we have figured out that we can uh, use the uh, VR directly in the web, and we have there a stand, and uh, people can try the uh, people can try the our our very very simple game, and uh, the main reaction was like, wow, this is cool, and this is really running in the web in a Firefox in JavaScript, but like JavaScript, JavaScript is the language for validating forms and alerting stuff or something like that. And they were very surprised that uh, this actually can be done in a JavaScript. And uh, I would like uh, to show you uh, in this short presentation what, uh, what interesting things can be done directly in the JavaScript. Uh, 
Uh, there, is, uh, there is actually an official page in, uh, in MDN which, uh, which lists all the web APIs, uh, but, uh, but they are very, 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 very long list of them. And uh, uh, I need to pick some. So uh, this presentation is very subjective. And probably I will talk about, uh, about six of them. And uh, maybe there is some more interesting that I will, I will mention. And maybe there is, uh, there is some more cool or more capable or more, more updated. Because actually, it's out of my capability to, to know uh, all of them, but you can you can definitely go through and yeah, uh, I have picked uh, picked these ones. Uh, it was also on the on the description of the presentation, and I will uh, I will show uh, what each of them can do, uh, what are drawbacks of these APIs, and uh, what type of applications you can you can program with them. And this is the first uh, first slide that I I don't know actually if it works through the HDMI cable, but if not, I have it on my mobile phone. Oh, <laughs> I will probably do a thing that. Uh, Hello, Devkin participants. Nice to see you at the talk about browser API. Such a <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, this is like the like the live demo of the of one uh, one very uh, very uh, uh, strange drawback of this, but uh, probably I will I will uh, I will run it on my on my phone because it's it's uh, certainly loud. Hello, DevCamp participants. Nice to see you at the talk about browser API, such as me, a speech synthesis API. This is an example of such an API, speech synthesis, directly in your browser. I am looking forward for the following social event party. <laughs> uh, yeah, and th th this is actually uh, the, the script which, which uh, says this is actually this script. It, it, there, there is nothing more. If, if you copy this into the HTML and put it into the script script text, uh, this is actually the thing. Uh, there is, uh, like, speech synthesis is, is a bit old thing, but uh, when I want to do, do these things, for example, five years, six years, ten years ago, uh, I would need to use some external service. I would need to get some API key, uh, set up my server, uh, do there some configuration. I would need to, I would need to, to put a lot, a lot more work to, to do this func functionality. Nowadays, there is a standardized API uh, to synthesize voice on the, in the browser. Uh, there is a drawback. Drawback is that uh, the standardization is not uh, like not one-to-one -one, uh, what it sounds. It's like one-to-one -one or what should be sound and some systems. Uh, doesn't have, for example, English synthesis. Some systems doesn't work, uh, doesn't work properly on all languages. Some systems are male and some are female. Uh, you can uh, you can list the the voices. You can you can uh, you can you can do the thing that you are. Uh, do look through the available synthesizers and you pick the, the best one, but, uh, but, but it's, it, you have no guarantee that there will be a synthesizer for your language and for your gender you want. But uh, you, can be, uh, you can be pretty sure that for most of the devices, there is an English, uh, English voice uh, for synthesizing. So for some, for the English application, this is a very, very useful thing. Uh, there is an equivalent uh, API, uh, which is called speed, uh, speech recognition, which works the uh, other way around. Uh, 
but it actually needs a permission because it will be a little bit uh, scary if the web can directly listen to you and try to transcribe the thing you are saying and send it somewhere. So when I say, when I click here, run. <laughs> oh. Actually, I have some problem with my notebook, so, uh, so I need to. Yeah, so uh, n never mind, but uh, it, will, uh, it, it will do the thing that uh, it will ask for the permission. And never mind, I think. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, or maybe I can try. Uh, uh, pr probably not. It's like uh, this is one uh, this is one thing that I have that I n I will mention in in the next slide. But the the thing is that not on every browser uh, it is working, and uh, not on every browser you have permission to do it. So if we want to use uh, probably any of, of these APIs, you should uh, check, the, uh, check the permissions and you should check that actually you can do it. You, you cannot, cannot rely on the, on the thing. Uh, I will show it on the next, uh, on the next uh, slide uh, here. Uh, here is the accelerator. This is another API or another, another set of APIs uh, which can detect uh, the surroundings, like the or device orientation. It, it means it means whether the whether the device is is, is on the on the top or bottom or uh, how it's facing. Uh, it can uh, it can detect acceleration, and uh, it can detect uh, detect uh, much more things. Uh, I am listing here four of them, but uh, for each of the APIs I am I am showing here, but uh, uh, but uh, code is only for the accelerometer. You probably should to uh, like detect if there is or isn't the uh, the actual thing because uh, uh, because there uh, there may may be not there. Uh, you can uh, try to um, to look at the page which is called canIuse.com, uh, and you can put there a uh, name of the API, and it will show you like the 95% of browsers is supporting the accelerometer uh, API in the Czech Republic, uh, and uh, then you can you can decide if you want or or don't want to use the API. Uh, and there are a lot, a lot of them, and a uh, lot of them has, uh, has pretty, nice, pretty nice usages. Uh, the obvious usage of these APIs are for the, for the games, and I will be using, the, I will be using such, a, such a thing. Yeah, uh, this is the thing I have mentioned in the in the first place. Uh, there is a there is a way how to uh, how to use uh, virtual reality and augmented reality directly from your browser. Uh, it there are uh, three APIs. Uh, it is a bit confusing, but. Uh, there were in the past API which was called WebVR API. This is now deprecated. It works somewhere, but it's deprecated. Uh, and it was replaced by WebXR API. And WebXR API is uh, the way how to, uh, how to unite uh, through one standard all the devices like the virtual reality headsets, augmented reality headsets, mobile phones, uh, 
uh, and probably the, the new device from the Apple will, will implement it also. I, I don't know, but, but I think. Uh, I actually don't know what, what will happen if I try it here, but I can, I can show, you the, show you the thing, uh, thing on the device where it's supposed to, supposed to, be, to be testing. When I, I don't know if it's, uh, you doesn't need to see the text, but, uh, but do, you see the, do you see the button? When I when I play, when I say run, it's like uh, it like uh, detects that oh this device is uh, has registered Google uh, I don't know Google cardboard glasses it's called that and uh, it it sends the thing into the Google cardboard glasses but uh, actually uh, to do there some real thing or to do there some uh, some real 3D stuff. Uh, it's probably better to use some some uh, libraries. Yeah, this is like this is like this code running in this in this uh, in this screen. Uh, when I when I run it on the device, it will. It will turn on some some detecting mode, and I can I can see the I can see the the stars. But uh, uh, this is the thing that uh, a lot of uh, a lot of these these raw APIs has in common that uh, you can you can use them directly. It's it's this thing. This is this is this. You don't need anything else than this code to like start the uh, start the VR experience. But there will be nothing. There will be some uh, some default default setup and nothing else. Or you can use some framework which will uh, uh, which will be which will enable you to to do their stuff without knowing things like shaders and, uh, and rendering pipelines and uh, so much things that they will probably be up to one day of the DEF CONF and one day of the workshops here to, to, do, their, to, do, their, to do their such things. When you want to try to, uh, to, do, their some, to do some AR, VR stuff, I recommend uh, Babylon framework or uh, A-frame framework. Uh, Babylon framework is imperative. It's like the it's like you are programming the thing. You are telling put here the square, put there a controller, put there a light, put there a put there a that thing, and do the do this when the user clicks on that. And the A-frame framework is like a HTML or SVG, but for 3D. You have XML code which. Uh, which defines the scene, and you can define by XML. Uh, here is a cube. Here is a uh, here is a circle. Uh, here will be the wallpaper. Here will here will be the skybox. This is pickable. This is this is static, and you actually don't need to know the programming. You can you can just design it by the uh, by the coding or by some by some editor. And uh, this is the thing that uh, you have seen that on my mobile phone it, it uh, tried to attach on the on the sensors, so it so it was it was like more interactive. On the notebook, uh, it is uh, the notebook hasn't uh, hasn't have these sensors, so uh, so it's fall back on the classical game three D mode. And the framework is doing doing this work. Uh, by yourself. Yeah, uh, this is uh, this is like uh, this is like the v a little bit weird, maybe that I'm telling about this uh, in the presentation, which I am mentioning, for example, web VR or or the speech synthesis, but mm, but. Uh, 
one thing in the JavaScript was a uh, very, very, very big pain. And it was working with the dates and the, uh, and the formatting stuff. And there were, there, there were totally messy and non-useful stuff there. And, uh, but nowadays, there is a pretty, uh, pretty useful and uh, very widely supported uh, API for, uh, for manipulation with the text strings, which you can use and you don't need to include there any library or some, uh, or some other stuff. You just, uh, you just tell, hey, uh, JavaScript, format me uh, this object to, to that format, and it will, it will just do it. And Yeah, and uh, and the thing that's uh, that's a big thing in a JavaScript that uh, when you have uh, all the things that I have shown you, uh, maybe not the not the VR there there is uh, there is some rendering in the in the WebGL, but all the all the things which are running in the JavaScript are running in a one thread. It's like the one one threaded uh, one threaded process, and you uh, you are a little bit limited with it. But nowadays you have some options how to offload the work onto the second thread and the third thread, and you can you can make a proper uh, multi-threaded application. And uh, there, are, there is a thing called web workers. Uh, I don't know how, how, how much of you have heard or used web workers. Yeah, if, like a third of you. Uh, web workers is the thing that you can, you can run the secondary thread in JavaScript and you can send messages between the main thread and the second thread and you can do some hard work there. You can, for example, uh, compute there some very heavy stuff or something like that. And nowadays there is an API for uh, for doing the hard uh, work stuff, uh, but in the canvas. Uh, it's pretty useful when you want to render some, some very, very, very heavy stuff uh, and, uh, and don't want to mess the, mess the whole UI. Because when you, when you are uh, working in a main thread, you need to, you need to do some, you need to do some interpolations with animation frames and you need to, you need to stop and need, and to settle up the UI and do, do there some strange stuff. But if you use this, uh, you can, you can do very hard work in the worker and if the, and when the worker is ready, it will send, it will send the message into the main thread and the main thread will show the, show the result and everything is working. Uh, working very seamlessly. Uh, it's uh, uh, it's uh, I, I I I was I was thinking about what, what else I can I can show you, but there are so many things. So probably now I will ask uh, ask you if there is uh, if there is some things that you are interested in the JavaScript or in the browser uh, you want to do because uh, because there are so many things and uh, so uh, so little time to to present to present it so I will ask you what what you uh, yeah you mentioned geolocation is there also a compass so you can tell which direction you're facing yeah there, there is a compass uh, in this uh, there are multiple sensors and uh, uh, and you can you can list all, all of them in the in the MDN page. And yes, there is a compass. And, and also the important thing that there is also a geolocation, and uh, the geolocation is the separate like the separate permission when you when you allow the uh, when you allow, for example, gyroscope, uh, you need to separately allow geolocation like where you are because it will be. Uh, I have uh, I have ten minutes or five yeah uh, so maybe camera. yeah yeah uh, definitely it's like uh, it's 
it's like the uh, the framework Babylon, which I have shown here. Uh, it's combining a lot of things together, and uh, it's also combining a camera. But you can you can access the raw camera uh, as an API, and you can do there. Uh, pretty everything you can do in the application. You can, you can program proper uh, camera application in the web, uh, which actually does everything that as the, as the normal application. Uh, and also, uh, there are very good APIs, uh, which can uh, work with the streams, which can take the camera and stream it somewhere or take the camera and process it and do with there some stuff. Uh, and that's the, that's the thing I have. I have prepared here. Uh, when, you are, when you are using the camera, there, there is, there is one, one thing that JavaScript or the browser uh, cannot do, but it's not about the capabilities. It's about uh, it's about permissions or sandboxing. Uh, the JavaScript or JavaScript from the browser cannot modify the files on your system because it will be it will be weird that you you cannot you actually cannot do in directly on a web, uh, for example, file uh, file explorer or some or something that that is saving the files, but uh, there are ways. Uh, the one way is that you can emulate the downloading. You can actually uh, create the file, for example, from the camera or, or PDF file or uh, I don't know, whatever, and you can bundle it into the file and emulate the download of the file, and the file will be downloaded, but not from the web, but internally, like from the, from the JavaScript. And uh, and also, uh, also you can you can open the the file picker box. It's like it's like you can uh, you can look you can tell the user, hey, now upload me up, upload me here some file. But you actually don't need to upload it somewhere. You can you can process it in the JavaScript. But uh, in this situation, the permissions work like when you. When you click OK or Open or whatever is the is the submit button in the in the uh, file submit form, the, you are giving the permissions to the to the JavaScript that can read this file. Uh, before that, JavaScript cannot even see or or doesn't have any any uh, any information about your files. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's a very, very good question. It depends on what API you are using. Yeah, yeah, the uh, uh, question is what is the overhead of the, of the JavaScript? And it depends on the type of the API you are using. And it depends on browser. Some some are more efficient than than others, but uh, for the heavy work, like for example, when you are computing uh, number pi in the worker, it's uh, it's percentually slower, but it's not like uh, it's 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 not it's not uh, totally different. It's like uh, I think sixty percent of the of the performance of the of the C or something like that. Uh, it's not. It's not definitely the like 100 percent or, 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 or. So uh, if you want to do very very heavy stuff, probably JavaScript isn't the option. But uh, when you are doing probably anything else, it is okay. Yeah, the question is uh, the question is uh, how you can 
uh, how you can know that there is some cool API there. And, or where you can find the, the, the new APIs. Uh, I think it, it depends. Uh, you, can, you can definitely go through the manual and the, and the new things, but uh, it, is, it is not a, for me it is not a good way because there are so many things and you are, you are a little bit confused with them. Uh, I am, uh, every time I see something on the web which surprises me, I look at the, I look how it is done. A uh, lot, of, lot of the things I have discovered, it was like I was browsing the web and I have seen that, oh, uh, oh uh, there is a web which can transcribe your voice and, uh, and, do, and put the voice into the video and then download the video uh, as a different format than you upload it there. And I was like, what? This, th there, there must be something on the server. But, and I have turned off the internet and, and seen, oh, there is... Uh, there is nothing on the server. It's running in the JavaScript. It's a web application. So, uh, so I have I have studied what was the thing which can uh, which is doing this uh, this feature, and I I have seen. And uh, the second the second source is the libraries. There are some very cool libraries which are integrating these APIs together. For example, Babylon JS is integrating the Camera API, WebXR API, WebVR API, uh, sensors, uh, full screen API. There are like dozens of N APIs that this framework is combinating together in some useful stuff. So uh, looking for these. Yeah? Yeah, uh, the question is uh, if it isn't a little bit overkill to have all the things and if it won't uh, like uh, uh, totally, totally over, overwhelm your memory. And the thing is, yes, it, it's, it's like the, for, uh, for example, 20 years ago, browsers were like the smart PDF readers which were, which, which were capable of nothing, maybe the forms and the validation of the forms. And JavaScript was originally the language for the small uh, things and small validations and, and alerts and something like that. And uh, nowadays, JavaScript is language for creating the full capable applications. Uh, and I actually don't know if it's good or bad. It has some drawbacks, it has some, uh, some positives. For me, it is maybe uh, more positive because you have very portable applications, uh, which can be very, very easily ported from one device to another uh, without any installations or without any struggle. And there is a second thing. Every, uh, each of these APIs, which are uh, actually interacting with your device, for example, with the location or with the sensors or microphone or something like that, uh, are needed to be uh, are needed to be uh, allowed by the user. You must allow the API before the JavaScript can even even touch it. Uh, there is there is the thing that JavaScript can do the computations. For example, it can mine the cryptocurrencies in the in the background, and it was the problem. But uh, but nowadays the browser has mechanisms to detect such a malicious behavior. When you go to the website which is doing something very strange in the JavaScript, the browser can detect it and, and tells the user, hey, this, this, this page is doing some nasty stuff and drains your battery. Do you, do you want to keep this JavaScript running or not? And you can decide as a user. Probably. I don't know if we are out of time or if we have, yeah. So thank you for your attention. And I will be on the networking party so we can try to do. So thank you. <laughs>